now the shock shouldn't come right out. Thor, speak. Good boy. Hey guys, welcome to Gearheads. So today on Gearheads, we're gonna be installing coilovers. Now, these coilovers are gonna be brand new to my car. Uh, they were actually brand new on Jesse's old car, but unfortunately that car got wrecked, but the suspension was totally fine. Yeah, they only had about three or 4,000 miles on them when the car got wrecked, and uh, these ended up coming out of it totally okay. So this is uh, Power Tricks. That's the company that makes these. I guess they're pretty big into Nissans, but they also make these, uh, or they're making them for Miatas now too. And uh, Greg Peters of the Car Passion Channel is the one that was uh, originally introduced me to him. He uh, had them show up to a meet and I tried them out and I actually really liked them and they're a very good price. So definitely check them out. I'll throw a link in the description to their website. And yeah. So I'm really excited to get these on my car. So follow along. All right, so we're gonna get started on the uh, right side of the car and uh, do the front, and then we're gonna do the back, and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the other side after that, but uh, just follow along with us while we do this side, and the other side is exactly the same. There's really nothing different except for in the very, on the back side, there is a little panel that's got four 10 millimeter screws that you gotta take out, and that covers up the, uh, um, the top of the shock and the gas lines that go through there. And those ones are a little bit harder to reach also because the gas lines in your way, but it's still the same. So you should be able to follow along with us and have no problem doing this job. All right, you guys, so first step we're gonna do here is we're gonna take out the bottom bolt of the shock here. Uh, and that's gonna be a number 17 on both sides. Uh, after that, we're gonna go ahead and take out one of the end link bolts. And then we're gonna take out the uh, long bolt to the air arm up here. Um, after that, we're going to take the bolts out to the top of the shock and the shock should come out pretty easy. Apparently, somebody's worked on this car before and they got a little bit too excited when they were putting the bolts in because they are way tight. So Matt's having a lot of fun, huh buddy? A lot of fun. I think these guys went the German way. What's that? They just went, good and tight. Good and tight? Good and tight. Oh, hi Thor. Oh, we have our vehicle inspector. Thank you, Thor. Does it smell good, buddy? Yeah? Oh, you get it? Yeah. There we go. Jeez, that was it's still tight. Was this always a California car? Uh, when you looked on the history? I don't know. I think so. I think the guy that... They're kind of rusty. I mean, it did sit in your yard for 10 <clears> years, <throat> though, so... <laughs> that, <laughs> that might have something to do with it. All right, so we got the lower shock bolt out down here, which was the number 17 again, and then we got the uh, end link bolt for the sway bar out, and that's the number 14. And now we need to pull out the long bolt, which goes all the way back over here, up to here. What size is that, Matt? That is gonna be a size 21 on both sides. If your bolts are too tight like these ones are, and you can't get it easily with just this, get another wrench of almost the same size and go down around the open box end and slip it over like that. And now you're pulling from further distance. So here, use that, Matt. Just make sure you keep it straight because you don't want to, when you're pulling really hard, you don't want it to slip and send your hand and knuckle flying into something. It hurts. There you go. Ugh. You got it. Cool. Hey guys, now that we got the nut off of the long bolt, uh, in order to get the bolt out, we're gonna tap it a couple of times with the hammer just to get it flush on that side so we can get it as far as we can. And then we're gonna take the crowbar and uh, tap it out the rest of the way by using the head of the, the, head of the bolt there. So, here we'll goes nothing. You gotta pull, then after it gets a ways out, you gotta pull that washer back because it can't make it through the, uh, it can't make it through the sway bar mount there. All right, long bolt is out. Mm -hmm. 
And there she is. All right, now that the long bolt's out, we got the end link disattached and the lower shock mount off. This is free to move around. So we're gonna go ahead and go up top and we're gonna take the two shock mount bolts up there off. Okay, so the two bolts on the top of the shock mount are gonna be in number 14. So somebody put these alignment bolts in way too tight so that lower control arm is not going down easily like it's supposed to. So look out, Thor. Back up, buddy. Oh, I know, you wanna help? You're such a good boy. All right, back up, go sit down. So since I'm the heavier one here. Oh, well you weren't even able to move it with your hands, really? I didn't even try, honestly. Oh. I just figured it was way tight. To, way to try. <laughs> Never mind. I thought I was gonna have to freaking step on it like a caveman. There we go. There we go. Out. There's one. Juan. 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 All right, so we're about ready to install the coilovers on the car, but I was just gonna show you a couple quick things before we did that. So uh, this style coilover has a shock here, which is threaded all the way down to the bottom. And then you've got your bottom mount. And when you buy them, they usually come on here. But what I like to do is take them off and uh, I match the fronts to each other and I match the backs to each other just to make sure that when you put the car on the ground, it's about the same left to right. And then it just makes it easier that way to adjust it once, the, once these are on the car. And you can make sure that these are all loosened up before they're harder to reach when they're on the car. So to do that, Matt and I went ahead and measured from the bottom of the shock to this collar here. And we matched that on uh, the, both of the front springs. And then we just go ahead and screw this on until it meets the collar up here. So what we ended up actually doing was setting this to where it was about a half inch higher than it was on my car because my car rubbed a little bit and uh, I didn't get around to fixing that. So for now, we're gonna put it on the car that way and we'll see what the ride height's like and uh, see how it drives. And if we wanna adjust it later, we can. And that's how you set your ride height on this type of coilover. So before you put it in the car, make sure these things are all kind of lined back up to each other, but don't tighten them too much because once they're in there, if you wanna make any adjustments, if you wanna, uh, raise the ride height or anything else. You don't want these to be too tight because then it's just really painful and more difficult to reach your hands in there and, and adjust them. It's a lot easier while you have it on the bench. So right now these are all kind of loose. I can move them around and then once they're finally installed in the car and we have the car where we want it, then I'll come back and tighten them down. Uh, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the shock uh, up into the into the mount holes here, and I'm just gonna get a couple of threads started onto the little bolt sticking out, just to make it a little easier on me first. It just makes it easier. It holds the shock in place while you're putting everything else together down there. All right, now line up your upper control arm again and get the long bolt started back through it. All right, so get your long bolt into position over here, and then just make sure you slide that washer onto it before, because you don't want to have to take it back out to get the washer on. They are a requirement. There we go. And then the easiest thing is, since it's hard to reach in there, is just get a socket wrench and just use the tip of it and then just tap it. There, there we go. go. Good. You good, you tight over there? Yeah, I'm tight. Are you tight? All right. So they don't need to be as tight as they were when I took them off, but they do need to be tight. By the way, if you're putting in uh, coilovers like this, what actually ends up happening is it lifts the control arm up a little bit because it's gonna drop the car and your end link will not match up as easily if it's still connected on the other side. So the best thing to do is take both end links off and then after both coilovers are installed, then go back and install these. And then don't forget to come back and tighten up the top shock mounts when you're done. Bro, guess what? You got coil over. Sweet. You're gonna slam your car and be the race king. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start doing on the back. And uh, it's very similar to the front, but instead of using the long bolt on the top and the back, we've got this at the top of the spindle here. 
And that's what, number 14, I think? 14. 14, and then we're gonna take the shock loose first as well, and then uh, that's, and then the end link also. And then just the top two nuts up there, and it's good to go. Good to go. Let's do it. What size is that, by the way? 17. Good job. Thanks. All right, so the next bolt I'm gonna take off is the one at the top of the spindle here, and this is gonna be a number 14. Hey. Cool. Legit. Easy. All right, take that swivel end link off, and we're done down here, almost. That is also a number 14, I believe. Yes, it is. You're in the way. What if you're in the way? I'm the one working on the car. What if, what if my goal is to get the very best shot possible? I kind of suck at it. It's not easy to do. I wanna be the very best. Ugh. No one ever was. What? Yeah, what? It's a little stuck. There you go, pick up the controller a little bit. There you go. Ugh. Good job. Good job, Matt. Excellent. Good job, Matt. Excellent job, Matty. Proud of my All right, let's get those upper shock bolts. What size are those, 14? Yes, sir. Let's All right, Matt, I got the light. All cool. right, so there's gonna be two bolts way up in here. These ones are easier to get to, uh, but it's gonna be the same as the front. You have two bolts holding the top of the shock uh, up into the car. On the left and right side, don't go for the center nut. Don't go for the center nut. Now on this side, this is the side where the gas cover is. I've already taken mine off, uh, but like we said earlier, there's only four bolts that are holding it on, um, and they're gonna be a little harder to get to because of the lines here, but if you have an extension and a universal joint, you're probably fine. Yep. Dude, what's up with this janky wiring? It's, <laughs> I'm not done with it yet. You're not done. Ah! I hit myself with the light. Was it hot? Yeah, it's really hot actually. Yay. Yay! Blown shocks out of the car. Obsolete. Those shocks were so bad, dude. They were pretty bad. We were bouncing around like crazy every time we hit a bump. But there you go. And up, uh, down a hair. Up. There you go. All right, now while it's up, I'll get these nuts started on it real quick. Just hold it there. If you're by yourself doing this, it's not a big deal. You can just lift it up that way by putting a jack under the control arm. Sorry, it'll go back. Please. Just kidding, we're not done. Don't forget to come in here and tighten those uh, nuts on top of the shock. Tell them, Thor. <laughs> Good boy. Now we just gotta put the wheels back on the car, drop it on the ground, and we'll see how it sits. <laughs> All right, it's the moment of truth. How's she gonna look? You gonna be, you gonna be Stance Nation? So. Dude, what's it gonna look like? Let's see. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Ow! Ow, look at that wheel tuck! Oh my God! Ow! This is low, dude. What do you think? I like it. It shouldn't rub, those tires aren't very big. All right, so we walked around the car with a tape measure as you see there. And uh, we measured and what we're gonna do actually is lower this side on the, this back corner about a quarter to a half an inch, so like three eighths of an inch. And then um, we're gonna come up to the front right side here. And this one was sitting really low. So we're actually gonna raise it a little bit. And it's important to remember when you install these, you wanna get it to the ride height you want and you'll see it. But what's gonna happen is after you drive the car for about a week or so, your suspension's gonna settle and even, even longer. It takes sometimes up to a month. Depends on how much you drive. 
Um, but the suspension will continue to set a little bit and lower and then that'll be your final ride height So make sure you actually set it a little bit above what you ultimately want and at least for us We want it to drive and handle well. We don't want it to be rubbing and uh, Be we want it to be somewhat comfortable too, right? Right. I mean at least I know in my car relatively comfortable. You might be a stance bro though I don't know dude Calling me fat so we're going to lift the car up and crawl underneath with those uh, spanner wrenches and then uh, we'll just loosen that bottom collar and then turn the whole shock down into that lower mount to lower it on the back side and then opposite on the uh, front right side we're going to do the same thing to raise it back up. All right. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see down here very well. It's pretty dark. I left this bottom one loose. and I did that for a reason. So. What the, what the heck did you just do? Ah, Thor, help me, he's attacking me. What was that? I fell, I'm sorry. <laughs> just fall on me, your knee almost landed on my nuts. I'm sorry. Thor, move. All right, let's try that again. Oh, okay. Um, first, I'm not gonna adjust these top ones really, so I'm actually gonna tighten that a little bit. All right, those top ones are together pretty good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and raise this up. And it seems to me in my experience, whatever you do here is multiplied twice on when it comes down to the tire. So if I wanna lower it down a half an inch, I'll lower the shock itself down only a quarter. Thor, what are you doing? We got our, our vehicle inspector inspecting again. All right, so I spun it about an eighth of an inch or so down into that shock and I tightened up those collars. So let's go ahead and set the car down and see where it sits. All right, I'm measuring from the center of the wheel bearing area here, the hub. Up. And that is still at, let's see, it's like 12 and a half to the lip. And that one is now, what, 13 to there? Hair over 12 and a half. Let me see what it is over here again. The same. That's good. They're pretty much exact. So let's go ahead and lift up this side and we'll raise that front corner just a little bit. And uh, yeah. All right, I know you can't see, but all I did is uh, we turned the wheel to the left and that gives you enough room to get under here with a spanner wrench and uh, start adjusting this. So what I'm doing is turning this collar so that it's pulling the shock back up out of the mount and that should raise it back up to where we need it. That is... Center that is 12 and a quarter exactly, like almost exactly 12 and a quarter. It's pretty close. It'll change a little bit when it settles, too. So I'd say for now that's probably good. Besides the fact that this is like not even a millimeter higher <laughs> than the other side, and this is the side you sit on when you're driving. So, calling me fat again? Yes, I am. Thanks. You big boy. <laughs> well, that's it. We're all done. So Matt's car is sitting a little bit lower and it looks nice and hopefully it should handle a lot better. His old shocks were like totally blown out, gone. Yeah, you could stand there next to the car and just keep doing this and it would just keep going boing, boing, boing. Yeah, so I'm super excited. I'm stoked and pumped and uh, you know, it wasn't really that hard for us to do. It took us a couple hours to do, but uh, it was all big pieces, you know, not a, not a bunch of small parts. Yeah. Well, I know there's like a lot of those YouTube videos, people are like, coil over install in 10 minutes. It's like, well, yeah, you already had the car up in the air. You had all the wheels off already and you're racing as fast as possible. You're not taking the time to actually adjust the coilovers and everything else. So yes, if you're quick and you have the right tools, you can get them all on the car in 20 or 30 minutes or less if you're, if you're faster. But it does take a few hours still to do it right, and uh, that's what we try and do. So anyways, thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, we have plenty more in store, but it is about Christmas time right now, and we're both busy. I'm going to be actually going on a vacation, so there might be a couple more videos uh, before the end of the year, but then there's probably going to be a week or two where nothing gets put out, unless he decides to do something without me, which is very possible. <laughs> we'll definitely keep you guys updated, but thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and remember, keep wrenching! wrenching.